We interrupt our program with a special bulletin. An unidentified object has been spotted in orbit around the Earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Book Invasion. Thanks for joining me. I am your host, Scott. How about no, Scott? Today, I'll be doing a little Q&A. As I had reached 200 subscribers, I asked people for questions, and these are some of them. So let's go. Question number one. Why are you so amazing and wonderful and put out such great content? I love all of your videos. You're the best. Mom. Mom, come on. I told you. These are just for <laughs> my other viewers. Oh. Thanks, Mom. Love ya. Question number two. Are you from the Midwest? You have an air of Minnesota nice about you. Oh. I didn't know Minnesota nice was a thing. Um, but yeah, I grew, I was born and raised in Akron, Ohio. Uh, I grew up there and I moved to Arizona 2003. Yeah, I, I, coming out here, when I moved out to Arizona, yes, it, there there is a difference. Uh, you can kind of tell the people from the Midwest versus the people that were born and raised kind of in the deserts. They're a lot harsher. They're a lot tougher just because you, you know, you're in the deserts. You're trapped indoors out of the 110 degree temperatures half the year. So yeah. Question number three, how do you feel about the connection between Goodreads and BookTube? I, I don't know. I don't get the hate about Goodreads, I guess. You know, you know, star ratings aren't, you know, don't fully represent feelings and how a book is or not. It's it's all subjective, but it's it's just good as far as getting some recommendations for books, you know, tracking your reading. You can put up things on shelves. You don't even have to rate things if you don't have, if you don't really want to. You know, you can ignore the ratings that other people give. So I, I don't know why people hate Goodreads, or I don't use Goodreads, it's, I think it's awful. Just, uh, you know, it, it's good for keeping an audit trail of what you're reading, um, what your friends are reading. The rating system, you know, you can use Goodreads without using the rating system. And you can get recommendations, you can comment on people's status updates. You know, uh, I enjoy it, I use it a lot. I see other people's feeds and see what they're reading, what their progress is, and ask them questions like, "Oh, what did you, did you think about this part?" You know, I I don't I don't understand the hates the Goodreads gets, so you know I'm okay with it. People seem to calm down, chill out. Do you read with your kids? If so, what kind of books have you been reading with them lately? Yes, I do read to my kids. Lately, we have in, been enjoying some. Um, some Pete the Cat, some Little Critter books. We have whole box sets of those. Um, we enjoy The Day the Crayons Quit. That was a good one. Um, I'm Just a Scribble. I'm Not Just a Scribble is a good one. Um, and recently my wife's been reading them, Harry Potter, the first book. Our, our oldest son's five. And he, we have the, the big illustrated version of Harry Potter. And he enjoys it for the most part. He likes to look at the pictures, but in the pages without pictures, he kind of zones out and kind of flops around. But he, it's, you know, he's getting it in his head. He's not super eager to dive into it. But when we get him in there and we start reading it to him, he enjoys it. How long have you played ukulele? Uh, well, yeah, if, if you've watched uh, my booktube jingle video, I play the ukulele and sing a little ditty for the... <laughs> Uh, about booktube yeah I have only recently gotten the ukulele I've played guitar since I was about 16 um, and I've kind of been in a few in just a couple garage bands here in Arizona with a buddy that I, I used to work with and so we've recorded some tracks none of them we've actually released um, but we had done some shows here and there and so yeah, with that, I, then I picked up playing bass guitar since since my friend was playing lead guitar. We didn't need two guitars, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll play bass. And so 
And then we got a ukulele for the kids because they liked to play around when they had a little like Lightning McQueen plastic guitar that they were just hammering on. And so uh, my father-in-law got them like a real ukulele and then I tuned it up and I kind of showed them how to play. But they don't really mess with it as much and I was like, okay, I need to write a jingle and my guitar was too loud. It was overpowering the whole thing so I busted out the ukulele. Hit some jams. But yeah, I've been playing guitar just on and off for 20 some odd years yeah uh, if you could be the front man for any band during any era who would you be that's a tough one um you know it's, uh, I run off of like you know the beatles no that would just be insane um, Pink Floyd, yeah, but they, I think they take too much acid. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I'll skip the 70s and 80s rock bands. I don't know. I think I would want to be somebody like Trent Reznor, just to see how you know those that type of that type of music that type of angsty mood but it, the also creativity and the songs that he makes with with the amount of layers that he does i think maybe that might be my pick because he's also kind of very private um he's not out and about but then you can think about um you know after he he had gotten clean and stuff you know i, I would like to be a fly on the wall for like Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor's creative process, his writing process, and the creation of all that music, that would be pretty. That would be pretty amazing. I think that would be a band that I I can really get behind. Um, I think that would be probably be my pick. Um, what's the best job you've ever had and the worst job you ever had? The best job I ever had was working at Tower Records here in Arizona when I moved here. That was the, the funnest job ever. I started just as a cashier for holiday help. And then I moved my way to like a product manager. I worked there for three years. And that was just so much fun. Like we got visited by the reps from the record labels. They came in and they would show us here's some new artists. They would give us some free promos. And they would even get us t concert tickets for any of their artists that would come through town. And, you know, I had gotten backstage for like a festival we had here. Um... I got to stand on the side of the stage while Incubus was playing and watch them, and that was amazing. I met 30 Seconds to Mars a couple times. Um, I've seen a number of, of, you know, just modern rock bands that came through town were just asking for tickets, and I just got free tickets for that. And plus the amount of free swag you would get, the free CDs, the free DVDs, um, and the job there was awesome. They encourage you to kind of be yourself and use your self-expression. So I, I always had like a, I was the guy wearing like the ball chain necklace and I had a wallet chain, I think. I had these black wrist wrist bracelets from like Hot Topic or something and I had like, you know, finger rings. I was totally like, <laughs> I was totally like the, the modern rock guy for that store. We had like the resident metalhead kid with the long hair. Um, we had the older jazz classical aficionado. Uh, he was like in his 60s and he was working there. And so if anybody wanted to know about that. Then we had like the 80s new wave guy specialist. He was the manager. Um, then we had like the hip hop guy. And then we had a, a few like uh, the goths that, that worked there. So you, you kind of, there was different personalities that worked there. And so if somebody's looking for something, you knew who to ask. Or if I would overhear somebody ask the the new wave guy for like a modern rock band, I would hop over there and be like, oh, you're looking for this. Um, so from like 2003 to 2006 or seven, uh, I worked there. So anything that came out, any albums that came out <laughs> between that period, like I have a vast knowledge of because I had to keep track of the inventory, I had to order them, I had to fill up the end caps, anything that was on our top 40, um, any popular bands or any obscure bands that I would stock or, or shelve. That was the funnest job ever. I, I'm, I wish that place wouldn't have closed down. 
I love that job and all my tower peeps. Loved them. So then the worst job I ever had, you know, after tower closed down, I worked um, at a call center for an internet company. I worked there for seven years. And at first the job was fun. It was doing tech support. It was great because you, know, you, know, you got to know the products. You got to know how to build websites, how email works, how domain name works, all those type of things. And it was good knowledge for me. Like I had a, a computer background so then from that, you know, I was able to build websites, help people build websites, build online stores, blogs, servers, all that kind of stuff. And I kind of get a good grasp on how, you know, the internet works and SEO and email marketing and all those kind of things. And then it turned into, you know, less of tech support. It turned into more of like a sales position. Everything was very micromanaged. You had numbers you had to hit. And obviously I hit them because I worked there for so long, but it was just soul crushing at points and I hated it. Uh, another question, what are some of your favorite video games to play? Well, I, I don't really play video games currently with kids and stuff. I don't have much free time to play. But when I did play, um, you know, there was, there was a bunch and they were varied. Fallout 4, I think, was the last game that I actually bought for PC. Um, but some of the old school games that I still love so much are like um, Ratchet and Clank for, for PlayStation. Um, Monkey Island, those old point-and-click games, those are so much fun, and they I remember repurchasing them for some reason. Any of the Monkey Island games, if you haven't heard of them, they are um, so much fun and silly. They're kind of a point-and-click adventure game, and I love those. Um, there was a game called The Blob on the Wii, I think I had. And The Blob is just like, you. there's these evil little characters who sucked all the color out of your town, and you're this blob vigilante who dips into paint buckets and hijacks the paint and you blob on these buildings and these cityscapes to recolor these towns. There's a great soundtrack and music that goes along with it. Um, if you've played it, let me know what you think. Uh, I have also played The Blob 2 and that game was so much fun. Um, there is a PC game that's for free and that you should all go play and it's amazing. It's called Samarost. Um, I'll put a little clip of it Maybe I'll put a link down below. And that's too is, is this awesomely hand-drawn art point-and-click adventure game that came out, I don't know, 2013, like five or so years ago. I think there's two of them. Um, I'll put a link down below, but you should check it out. Samarost is amazing. I love that game. Um, and then I also play, I just started playing Magic the Gathering Arena online um, just because I used to play Magic in high school. I lost all my cards. And now I've just kind of fired this up and I'd be like, I just, I just want to play magic with somebody. And I love it. It's so much fun. I don't have any of my cards anymore, but playing it online remedies that because you just get decks and I haven't spent time building any decks. I just hop on and play the default ones, which I, I usually lose at. But it's fun anyway. Um, also Rocket League. I played Rocket League for a while. Um, not so much anymore. And any of the Uncharted Uncharted games were awesome. I loved Uncharted and the whole series. I'm super excited that they're going to put out a movie adaptation of that eventually. And everyone's pushing for Nathan Fillion to be um, Drake in that, which would be awesome too. Another question. I'm relatively new to sci-fi, so which authors slash books would be a good starting point? You know, I, I've gotten to reading maybe like five or so years ago, so I've, I've kind of skipped any of the old classics um, I haven't read a lot of those. So what I would recommend is to you, there's different levels of sci-fi as I see it, as there's ones that kind of take place in present day in this world, you know, you have this whole present day world, but then like something's just different. That's kind of like light sci-fi. And then there's, you know, medium sci-fi where you, some things take place on this world, but then there's also like some space galaxy and then like the highest sci-fi, which you're always in a different galaxy. There's different worlds and different races and languages and all that kind of stuff. So there's, um, you can start with a, a book called The Oracle Year by Charles Sewell. I did a review on it on this, on one of my old videos. It's just a, about a guy who starts a blog and he wakes up with predictions of the future. So that it's very exciting. It's kind of a good thrill ride. So you're not out in space or anything like that. There's no aliens. It's just something strange has happened. Um, there's also The Martian, which you may have heard about. 
that book is just kind of funny and witty and it's a good starting point for sci-fi some people say it has too much of the scientific mathematical calculations with how he gets his air filtered and all that stuff some of that stuff you can gloss over the story and the way that it's presented and the language and the kind of witty humor in it is is excellent so you can start with that um, another one is the humans by um, matt haig which is also kind of a present day kind of another alien inhabits this professor's body because of scientific developments and things like that so it all happens kind of in this world in this time frame um you should check that one out that one's awesome then we have um wool by hugh howie and the silo saga i would recommend that i won't go into that too much um, old man's war by john scalzi that one you kind of get into space and outer space most things happen on a spaceship on planets they have to fight some aliens if you want to get in that far into things and then there's leviathan wakes which is the expanse series and the expanse on the sci-fi channel that one's also in space but you now have factions that are warring with each other um the opa um the belters and mars are all now these political entities and that throws a whole huge space opera there's a bit of of alien culture to it um so that one's a little bit further out there if you want to go that route so those are some of the ones i would recommend um question is why do you choose to film your videos in a car well i have two toddlers at home and these are both of those are boys and they are crazy and rambunctious and loud and they constantly want a playmate because they seldom play with each other which usually ends up in them fighting over some toys in 20 seconds so they need a mediator to watch over them so therefore i don't have time or the luxury to sit down and look and talk to a camera for 20 minutes so the car is my quiet place and what are your top five books well, again, you know, I've only been reading recently. I haven't read a lot of the classics, so don't fault me for that. But I wrote down four, maybe because I couldn't pick five. Um, number one, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Now, hold on. This book, it just struck me in all the right places. It, it hit this, some of the common things that were that I had related to that happened. It took place in Ohio. I was born and raised in Ohio. Um, there were some mentions to some games and things that I had played. There was even like a, a car that he mentioned in one of the places around Halliday's neighborhood that was the exact car that I owned. So that that those type of little things was like, ah, uh, this book is the greatest book ever. And plus, I just think the, the amount of creativity that went into those clues, the amount of research, you know, it wasn't more of him flexing his muscle and saying, look at this. It was, it was more, I think, of a creative aspect on how can this be interesting. So some people don't like it, and that's understandable, but I loved it. Um, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Gotta love the redemption arc. Gotta love the vigilante. I love the, the brutality of that whole series. And it was just like, you know, the crow in meets Battle Royale on mars and it was just awesome um kings of the wild by nicholas eames and bloody rose i'll count them as one those are just so just just so much fun fantasy books they were awesome uh, the martian by andy weir and number five blah, 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 blah. maybe the humans by matt Hag, just because the the humanity of that book is just so amazing and it, and it strikes you with that top five movies let's see office space big lebowski boondock saints uh lord of the rings and star wars both of those trilogies that's easy top five albums holy moly I will say number one is the first 30 Seconds to Mars album, their self-titled album that came out in 2002, which is fantastic. Um, before they got all pop and synthy and crazy, all that kind of stuff. Uh, number two, I would say Nine Inch Nails, the Fragile album, even though Trent Reznor was kind of on drugs the whole time, but the 
just the roller coaster of that album the the highs and the lows the louds and the quiets of that are just amazing i, I love that album still um jimmy Eat world self-titled or or bleed american um that album just just rocks in all aspects of things um, there's a band from Austria called Steaming Satellites. They have an album called The Mustache Mozart Affair, which is probably a horrible album title, but these guys blew me away. They sing in English. Um, they're from Austria. They sound like Kings of the Wild meets AWOL Nation or something. Not Kings of the Wild. They sound like Kings of Leon meets AWOL Nation, and that album is just fantastic. I can listen to that on repeat. There's also a band called Athletics who put out an album called Who You Are Is Not Enough, which is very good mood rock, slow build, kind of post rock kind of stuff. And then I'll also throw in Carnivool, which is the uh, kind of the Australian version of Tool. They put out an album called Sound Awake, which is just fan friggin tastic. So that was my Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. So comment down below if you have seen or played or heard or watched the movies or games or whatever I've listed down below. Um, and thanks for asking your questions. I will probably do another one of these at 1,000 subscribers. Let's do it. All right, see ya.